Professor Taufi, uh, first, let me welcome you to this interview series. Uh, so many scholars have been interviewed, uh, and many uh, scholars, uh, maybe a little more than 20 scholars have been interviewed, but uh, many professors in the United States, professors in Germany, professors in, the, the, in England, professors in Hong Kong, and professors in China. Everyone said, you have to interview Tao Fei Ya. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you. So we are all so honored uh, that you have agreed to be interviewed. Now, uh, you and I have uh, discussed this, and you know, I respect uh, your native language is Chinese, and my native language is English. Most people will be watching this who, who are English speakers, maybe more than half. But I will try my best to uh, ask you a question in Chinese and English, and you can answer in English or however Great. you wish. So. Great. So first, let me just briefly introduce you, and then I'll ask you the first question. Uh, uh, you are among the most famous scholars of Christianity in China in China, and uh, so many scholars recognize and respect your work. Um, maybe I'll mention three books that you have worked on that many scholars uh, have, have read. The first book is the Bianyuan of Jindai Zhongguo, this third book, this third book has been so influential, has had a very large impact because so many people feel like your introduction, your rumen to the field of uh, is extremely helpful. But anyway, our objective is to hear you speak, not hear me speak. So, uh, 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 Let's, we'll begin the first question. Okay. Um, first, uh, 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 what what brought you, Professor Tao, to the field, to the study of Christianity in China? And then even added to that, can you tell us why you selected the specific topics that you have researched? Okay, you know, uh, it's my pleasure to have this interview. You know, so I'm honored to do this thing. You know. uh, thanks very much for your introduction. And I thank you very much for your uh, good uh, opening question. It's very good. You know. uh, I think many people ask me uh, why you know, did you uh, choose uh, to do research in Christianity? I think maybe behind that, they have a hidden question. Are you a Christian? You know, <laughs> but I can, actually I'm not, you know. I told them frankly, I want to be friend of Christian. You know, I want to know them, uh, that's why. I, you know, conducted a kind of research. But uh, I think there are several, you know, direct, uh, you know, uh, reasons. The first is, you know, the guidance of my, uh, uh, the teacher. When I was in the Shandong University, uh, I earned my first two degree uh, in Shandong University. You know, Shandong is the birthplace of the box movement. So Central University, the history department, is very famous in this kind of research. But it's very you know, interesting. Now, many scholars did a lot of the research on the boxes, but only on the boxes. They didn't do anything about the Christians. The Christian is the opposite side of the you now boxer movement, right? For the Christians. So that is a, is a very interesting, interesting thing. Uh, my, uh, I think you know why they didn't do any research on Christianity, because uh, before the opening up, research on Christianity uh, is a forbidden field. So when we were the students of the university, it's a time of opening up. 
So actually, I would like to say, it's uh, opening up, you know, brought to me and other young scholars into this field. Uh, this is the first reason. The second reason is, you know, the strong and, uh, you know, very uh, active, uh, the international uh, exchange academics, uh, academic exchanges. You know, in 1980, I think the Central University held a large scale conference on the box movement. And many scholars came from Japan and the United States to this conference, present their papers. Among them, there was a paper left to me very deep impression. It is the, the paper of the professor, you know, David Buck. Now he's a, once the editor of the Asian Studies. I think this topic is, you know, uh, I, I think this topic is a new explanation of relationship among the Christianity, the White Lotus Society, and the Boxers. Originally, originally, all the Chinese scholars at that time, they thought the White Lotus was a secret society of the poor peasant who was against the feudal system. How come these people you know, became Christians? And also Christian was regarded as a, you know, uh, organization in certain degree of the exploiting classes. But David Buck's paper proved you know, many people from the white law societies uh, were converted to the Christians. So, uh, you know, the Christianity is only a religion for the exploiting class is not, was not established. At that period, it is really a breakthrough, breakthrough. And also, uh, uh, Professor David Buck brought us some English stuffs. At that time, we lacked the English stuffs. Uh, these, you know, uh, publications explained why and how the white lotus people, you know, were converted to be Christians. Uh, this is things left me very deep impression. Oh, that research is so interesting. And at the same time, uh, Professor, you know, Joseph Ashrick uh, was doing research in our history department for his very famous, the origin of the boxer uprising. He also did a research about the boxes relating to the Christians. So he lectured us and gave us uh, some you know, discussion about the Christian and the boxes, uh, the boxes. Now, things are opening up, more and more scholars came to our university uh, to have lectures for us. I can you know, give you a few you know, names. I think, you know, uh, Dan Bass, uh, David Buck, Gary Tiedemann, and the other person is, uh, other scholar is Jim Hevia, Jim Hevia, Irving Schumann, and I think you know, uh, Professor uh, Paul Cohen also came to our university to give us a lectures. So this made us to re recognize that the research on Christianity is almost a virgin research area at that time. Uh, so it attracted young people like me uh, to begin, you know, the exploring the, the, the situation of the Chinese Christianity, Chinese Christianity. The third reason is that this you know, research areas had its own, you know, places to attract the young scholars. You know, it's, it's, it's new, it's young, and uh, it's many, you know, questions remain to be researched. Uh, so I, I think it's a good opportunity for our young people to do this research. And because of this research is very important. Why is it important? Uh, Christianity, the problem of Christianity, often became the major problem of the, uh, of the, the nation governance in the later Qing Dynasty. And before the KMT's regime is stepped in Nanking, it was also important, you know, national, it's a question 
on the national agenda. National agenda. So, so I began to do research, and unfortunately, I applied many you know research grant from the National Social Science Foundation, uh, from the, the from the Social Science Foundation of the Educational Ministry. At the same time, along with the development of the international academic changes. And uh, we also uh, try to get the support uh, from certain you know, research grants. Like, uh, you, know, you know, the United Board, United Board of the Asian Christian University and uh, the Henry Ruth Foundation and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, the Rich Institute of the University of San Francisco and many others. Uh, you can, you know, if you want to do some you know, specific topics, uh, you can get some support. Uh, this is also in the uh, impetus uh, to help the young people to do the, re to do the research in this uh, long, uh, long time. So, uh, anyway, I think this is a, there is a word, there is a term in sociology, and it calls, you know, path, path dependence. Has dependence. So when you begin to do some research, uh, you will do this uh, for a period, maybe a long time, maybe all your life. Yeah. Of course, I have done some other research, but I think my major field is research on Christianity. Yeah, let's, let's I tell you why, why, okay? The, the, your answer is, um, is a very, uh, I think a very profound answer. Because many scholars, many Chinese scholars have said to me, uh, This is an yeah. opportunity. Great. This is an opportunity for us to, uh, to really cooperate and collaborate. This is the, 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 the opportunity. And yeah. um, so I think that is a is a wonderful answer. And you also mentioned many people who I admire: Joseph Escherich, Paul Cohen. Uh, these are people in my own country who've who've who very much made a good influence. So the second question, we we have the second question. The second question is: You have been doing research in China. Well, I, I just uh, you know, answered half of the first question. Oh, okay, keep going. second part of the question. Okay, I'm ready. Now, the second question is, you know, uh, why are you uh, interested in the particular areas about which you have research? So I will talk about this more question. Uh, I think my research covers uh, several areas. The first area is Christianity and China's modernization. I have a book on the Christianity and the modern Sandon society. The book discusses the missionary movement and the medic, modern educational, medical, and philanthropic enterprises in Sandon province, as well as introduction of some handicraft problems and uh, new fruit trees and the good seeds of coffee. You know, when Professor you know, Paul Kuhn read my book, he said, oh, I even didn't know they have done such things, you know, you know because this is a thing, help the people to raise their, you know, living standard. Actually, you know, the big apple in the ground in Shandong and the big peanuts grow in Shandong, and all the, you know, the young tree and the seeds were brought by missionaries, you know, like uh, the John Nevis, and uh, you know, uh, John Nevis, and uh, Cobbett, uh, Cobbett, you know, uh, many, many, you know, I, particularly the Presbyterian missionaries, they brought uh, this thing. Uh, of course, I also talked uh, about the conflicts between the Christianity and the modern Sandton society. Uh, this book is a little bit old. But then many people say, if they want to know the Christianity and the Sandung, they'd like to search that book, you know, uh, to, get, to get a start. I think uh, my, another paper, uh, another, you know, uh, a book is a Christian university and a study of synology, study of Chinese studies. Maybe the synology is Han Xue, Chinese studies is Guo Xue, 
is glacier. There was a period of similar fever in Chinese academy around the 1990s. How were Christian University doing these errors? Because the people have certain impression. The Christianity just pay attention to religion, pay attention to import Western knowledge. But they will despise, ignore the Chinese studies. But is it, is it really the situation? It's wrong. I checked the archives, I checked the publications. My conclusion is that uh, most of the Christianity University performance in this area, excellent. And uh, you know, you know, uh, Hu Shi, Dr. Hu Shi, Hu Shi once mentioned, uh, if the Chinese National University, you know, don't work hard, uh, they will lag behind, you know, the Christian University uh, uh, for a bigger you know, distance. Who uh, is not a person, you know, uh, he the like, you know, Christian elite, uh, like the believers. But I think that this you know, comment is object. Uh, you know, so my book is very you know, influential. The people change the impression. Oh, oh, you know, the Christian University has done so many things in the uh, Chinese studies and uh, synologies. So I can mention, you know, the Yanji University, the Chilu University, the Catholic University in Beijing, and uh, the Nanjing University, the Jimmy University, and uh, the uh, the, you know, I think uh, the, the Lingnan University, mm -hmm. like the present, present days, all the university is a key university of China. You know, they have done excellent contribution in this area. This, this, this is also belong to the, you know, belong to the uh, paradigm of the modernization, modernization. The second area is the anti christian movement in China. The second uh, area that I, I research is anti-Christian movement in China. I have a paper collection published in Taiwan, China. I exploit the early patterns anti-foreign religious movement and the later non-Christian mo non movement. Uh, you can find uh, some interesting discoveries. Uh, although they are, you know, both was anti-Christianity, but their purpose uh, are totally, you know, the third is uh, indigenous Christian groups in the countryside. In the countryside, in my doctoral uh, uh, dissertation, I studied the Jesus family. I studied the Jesus family, and I discussed the religious, social, and the economic background of this Christian utopia in China. I and I identified the Jesus family is only successful in the Christian utopia in China. I know many good European in the United States, you know, but in China, only one. Uh, it is the Jesus family. The significance of Jesus family movement in the history of Chinese Christianity can be discussed in many aspects. Uh, first, the movement may be seen as a result of missionary activity in China, which demonstrates the conflicts and the compromises uh, between the missionary and Chinese converts between Christianity and the Chinese culture. Secondly, it has been seen a typical indigenous church movement, which reflected the demand of Chinese Christianity, particularly those in the rural areas for independence. Thirdly, it may be seen as endeavor of Chinese Christian to deal with their contemporary social problems by means of Christian ideas. The more important the significance However, is that the movements can be seen as an outstanding example of a Christian utopia in China, as one successful attempt to bring together the sacred and the profane, uh, combine the religious communal and the social economic uh, within this Jesus family movement. Uh, I also very interested in the missionary who came to China. I will talk later. Uh, I have written about American and British missionaries. Uh, however, you know my doctoral students, doctoral student, uh, Mr. Liang San, you know, who received the Fulbright Young Scholar, you know, fund, uh, she stayed at the Columbia University for one year, uh, and uh, 
she you know, checked all the in archive left by Eugene Bennett. Is the name ring the bell? Eugene yeah. Bennett. Right. And, uh, and uh, he and uh, her uh, dissertation about uh, Eugene Bennett uh, was commented as you know excellent respect of this area. Why? Why are you interested in this area? In fact, the study of Chinese Christianity is the part of Chinese history research. It's not you know, isolated from the Chinese history. It is the part of Chinese history. Chinese history. The trend of the domestic and mainstream historical research will affect the study of this branch. So, of course, uh, you can see my research is answer to the question posed by mainstream in the history. History, it's a dialogue. It's a dialogue. So that's why uh, I, I, I think eight my articles was published at the top journal of history, uh, Chinese social science, because I paid much attention to the dialogue between the research on Christianity and the research on Chinese history. Okay, this is maybe the question is finished. You know, one of the things that strikes me about that answer, Professor uh, Tao, is, is that not only have you provided some important research, many, many important works, but you're now uh, sort of passing that legacy to your own graduate students who are earning very prestigious grants. The Fulbright is one of the highest uh, awards you can receive in, in North America, and that's very impressive. Well, let me go to the the, the second the second question. For the the other question, now, 请您啊描述一项研究发作，使您对主题有有所不同。Uh, that is, uh, could you describe maybe a research discovery that you have had that changed your way of thinking? Okay, I think uh, you know. Um, I don't, it's a great question. I'd like to talk about one of my research. It's a textile research. The title is "The Textile Research of the Cultural Aggression," maybe cultural, you know, invasion. In the Chinese revolutionary discourse after the May Fourth Movement, cultural aggression is a most lethal slogan against the Western missionary movement in China. Mm. Uh, this slogan is related to the discussion of the cultural imperialism by North American scholars. However, they are produced in very different backgrounds, so they cannot be confused. Cultural invasion is deeply engraved in the collective memory of the Chinese people. Whenever we talk about Christianity, it is easy for people to think of this slogan. Since the opening, uh, since reform and opening up, uh, some scholars began discuss this you know, slogan. They thought that it is one side to generalize the missionary movement only by the cultural invasion. But I think it is still not very clear. What I, I have found is that the scholars only discuss whether this you know, slogan is appropriate as the academic analysis tool, but they have not noticed its formulation is an original product of Chinese history. And it should be object of the historical research. Only on the promise of research can they talk about whether it can be used as academic analysis tool. So secondly, the discussion on cultural invasion actually involves two situations. One is that in the actual struggle, the cultural invasion is used to oppose the Western cultural in enterprise. And the other is to use the cultural invasion as evaluation of the enterprises in academic research. There are connections but also obvious differences between the two. However, when discussing cultural invasion, they are often confused uh, before this research. So 
Therefore, my research is returned to the history of the slogan, return to history in terms of methodology, and I first to discuss how the anti-imperialist discourse came into being, and what does it mean. Then it will examine the function of this discourse in the actual struggle, and I finally discuss its entry into the academic field and its challenges. The most important thing is to return the social and the political context at that time uh, to examine this issue of this con concept. It turned out that the slogan was not only used by communists. Before we do this research, uh, we have the impression this slogan is a communist slogan, uh, only you know, uh, repeated by the communists. But that's not a situation. Uh, I have done picture study. I checked who invented this in a slogan. Uh, it is uh, one of the leader of the communist, uh, Xu Xiubai. But after that, many people use this slogan. Uh, communist, Kuomintang, the nationalist. Uh, then it's ridiculous, you know. The Japanese uh, use this slogan. Uh, after the Pearl Harbor, you know, uh, the Japanese propaganda, uh, uh, there are no pro propagation, you know. They, they said that, you know, let's unite to against the cultural aggression of the British and American imperialism in China. So they also, you know, use this slogan to attack, uh, to manipulate the Christian, the church at that time. So this is, I think, uh, decrease the sanctity, uh, the sa sa sent meaning of this slogan. Uh, more interesting, uh, during the you know uh, American became China's ally uh, after Pearl Harbor, communists say something very good about uh, the missionary enterprise in China. They highly praised the missionary is a good friend, and that I could become the bridge uh, to you know. Uh, United the Chinese people and uh, the American people uh, to fight the anti fascist war. So I, you know, searched the origin of this slogan. And then I found it's a function in different periods. And then I also found that different, different the parties uh, use this slogan uh, for a different purpose. So if you want to use this as evaluation of uh, this slogan, evaluation of the mission movement in China, uh, we should be careful, and uh, we should be put in the context. Uh, otherwise, uh, that would be, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, too simple, uh, too one side. Uh, this, this, you know, article published was, you know, uh, put on the, you know, top journal of China. Uh, it's a republished, republished. So that many people thought you have solved the problem, at least a part of. This is my, you know, uh, very important, you know, one of the uh, research I, I'm very happy because I spent many years to thought about this problem. And many people published in, on this, you know, issue. But later on, uh, my, I changed the research methodology. I put on the history context. It is, at first, it is a result of history. And then you can, you know, but uh, how you want to use it depends on you. But you must uh, recognize uh, it has a history. It has its own history. Okay, thank you. This is, a, a, I think, a marvelous answer uh, because the shift of the, this idea of an anti-imperialist uh, criticism of, of maybe the West, or sometimes an anti-imperialist criticism of Christianity, is complicated, and you've made some very important points. If you if you think about, um, for example, Tian Zhu Jiao de Dangguan or or Ji Du Jiao de Dangguan, Chuan Jiao Shi de Dangguan, Ji Du Jiao Dangguan de Cai Liao, you have many Cai Liao. Many materials will say that the Christians are anti-imperialism. So even many Christians think they criticize the the British Empire, even American missionaries criticize uh, Americans and French, some French missionaries criticize France for being imperialist. <laughs> so 
you, you, you uh, provide a very uh, excellent point. But let's go to question three. Um, 第三个问题, 我, 我先用中文来, 来, 来, 来问, uh, 您在中国经想, 经行, 您在中国经行研究时, 您经历过的最有意义的时刻之一是什么? So, so really, the, the question then is, if you could describe while conducting research in China, in China, what was the most meaningful moments to, for you? Okay, good question. Uh, as with the other historical study, uh, you know, the most exciting thing in the study of Chinese Christian history is to discover new materials. To discover new materials. Uh, I think, you know, in the summer of 1919, I went to the city archive to search for the information about the Jesus family. You know, search, I have searched for a long time, but I found nothing important. Uh, so it was a very hot summer day. I planned to take a bus in the evening. Just as I was preparing to buy a ticket, one sentence in the rings in my ears. I, it reminded me, you know, a, a, a sentence, a sentence. It's a, a favorable situation and the restoration of the initiative often result from the efforts to adhere to again. This is a, uh, this is a, uh, this is a, is a sentence, uh, repetition of Mao Zedong by a very famous Peking opera, Sha Jia mm. uh, You know, in the, during Cultural Revolution, uh, we all listen to the Peking opera all the year round. So we familiar with each of the sentence of its, you know, opera. So this opera, this sentence ring my ears. So I make a decision. I don't want to go home. I work with another small scale archives because I went to the larger scale the, the high level archives. So next day, I went to that small archives. Uh, it is surprising me, you know. I found a lot of things of this Jesus family organization. Uh, I'm very happy at that moment. Uh, so I spent uh, later, spent another two or three days uh, to collect and copy all the things. And so at that time, I think, you know, my dissertation is no problem anymore. Uh, this is the one thing that I experienced. Uh, the other thing is also I discovered new materials. You know, Professor Jessie Lutz once gave me her book about the anti-Christian movement. Uh, but the, she mentioned, he said that, the, rep the delegates of the Comintern, the delegates of the Communist International, uh, although they're sympathetic with the anti-Christian movement then, they didn't participate in to mobilize the student to, you know, uh, to organize this anti-Christian campaign. Uh, I, I pay respect the reduction to Professor, you know, uh, Jesse Lutz, you know, very high. But if for this conclusion, I you know, have in belief, but no proof, no say. At the last, when I, I transferred my job to Shanghai, I work in the Shanghai libraries. I, all, I found a lot of the things you know, translated from the Russian scholars, scholarship and into Chinese. So I checked the book. It surprised me. Many things are made it very clear the delegates of the committee, you know, they mobilize the people. They give the direction to the, 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 the leaders, you know, how to, you know, uh, organize such a campaign. Why they should do this anti-Christian movement? Because that time, you know, the YMCA in Shanghai and in all of China is very competitive. Uh, for the party to win the, win the mind of the young people. So that's why they'd like to move to organize this conference. So my discovery and my paper 
and a, a, a supplemental for Professor Jesse Lutz, you know, conclusion. And that's made me very happy, very happy. Oh, this is a great answer. Uh, you know, so we, we've been asking uh, every scholar the same uh, five questions. So, we go to the second question. Please describe your experience with us learning the most memorable memories. So, my question is, if you 有关两个人,三个人来讨论。So the question is, can you recall a particular good memory about another scholar? You've already mentioned many, but uh, this is your opportunity to speak about another scholar who you think sh we should remember. Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, maybe, you know, the, the definition of his memory means the scholar has passed away. Right? Yes, well, that anyway. many, either way, either way. Okay, okay. Well, I, to answer the question, I would like to mention two, you know, famous scholars in the field uh, who regrettably uh, passed away last year. The one is a professor of Daniel Bates. Mm -hmm. Professor Daniel Bates. I met Professor Daniel Bates very early in 1980s when he visited the Central University. Uh, he, you know, met my tutor in Central University. So my tutor was graduate, uh, graduate from the Yanjing uh, University in the before uh, liberation, before liberation. And um, at that time, he gave me an English paper, uh, The Role of Christianity in 19th Century China. So I put his article in Chinese and uh, published in the Bulletin of the Doctor Studies, or Studies. So because I think Professor Daniel Bates uh, paid much attention to the research on the Christian, on the Jesus family. Uh, so he went uh, to the Jesus family's original place, uh, made the, and the descendants of the family members much earlier than me. Uh, he went there with the Professor Li Suyu, a research in the Tianjin Social Science Academy. Okay. He came to our university very, very often, very often. And uh, uh, gave us lectures. When I came to Shanghai University, he also visited us for several times. And he usually came with his wife, Jen Bass. And uh, uh, his wife taught our students to play a pioneer, uh, pioneer, pioneer, yeah. Piano. Piano. Piano, piano, not a pioneer, piano. And he gave us a lecture about the research on Christianity. Christianity. Uh, Professor Dan Bass uh, gave my research a lot of help, a lot of help. I often changed, you know, uh, my point of view and I discussed with him about my, uh, my sense about uh, uh, Jesus' family. You know, there was a lady called Dillenbeck. Uh, she's a female missionary uh, in Tai'an. And uh, the, uh, the founder of the Jesus family was her student. You know? And also a student was her Mandarin teacher, Mandarin teacher. But later on, you know, when the Jing built up the Jesus family, and that Dylan Beck, Miss Dylan Beck moved to the Jesus family and uh, left the Methodist Church officially at that time. And this is a big news then. And then he, he worked there, lived there, because I think he was a little bit older, I think maybe around the 50 or 60s. And uh, he died there and buried there. there. But the, uh, Ms. Dillenbeck left too little information about her life. So where I can find the more information about her, but her also, uh, she was one of the founder uh, of the Jesus family. Uh, uh, Professor Dana Bass uh, brought me a very valuable information about uh, Nora Dillenbeck, uh, uh, 
uh, written by another mission, female missionary in Saint Dom. Right. So I, I was very you know, grateful. Many, many, many other things. And uh, Professor Daniel Bass also accepted my tutor, Professor Wu Ziming of the Hong Kong Chinese University, to participate in my oral defense, my oral defense. And then when my book uh, went to publish, and uh, Professor Bass you know, wrote to me a long preface uh, to say about my research. The last time I met him is uh, 2011 in the Beijing Hotel. Uh, he invited me to Beijing and uh, he taught, he gave me his the, you know, excellent book, The New History of Chinese Christianity. Chinese Christianity. Uh, Professor Bass is a very you know, knowledgeable in the Chinese history, uh, in the history of Chinese Christianity. Uh, in China, uh, he was regarded as a, you know, some you know, very you know, capable scholar. In China, we call the largest scholar, the biggest scholar, biggest scholar. And uh, he is very gentle and very generous and uh, very helpful. He enjoyed a very good reputation in China. Uh, since he you know, passed away, we talked about a lot about him. And uh, the other scholar is Professor Gary Tiedemann. He had visited our university many times. And he also invited by me to have one-term lectures about the Chinese Christianity, about the history of Chinese Christianity uh, when he retired. He first came to Shanghai University. Then he was invited by the Shandong University. But um, uh, what I remember the, you know, deeply is, uh, is one thing. He invited me, I think in 1994 or 1995, in a summer vacation. He invited me to join him to do field trip uh, in, in southern Shandong. Because I think at that time, uh, he wanted to finish his research and later on publish in China about the violence and the boxer movement in, in, in Shandong. So I went with him and took a lot of the Counter towns and, and the prefectures. There was an interesting story because we first stop is at Jining. Mm. Jining is a, is, a, is a prefecture, not that famous. I, I think they don't see foreign much of it. So when I walked with him, he's a tall and handsome and always keep a good fit. You know. uh, one person, you know, meet us, you know, ask them. Where are you from? I know. What, uh, what are you doing? You know, where will you go? <laughs> like the philosophy, I ask the, the very famous philosophical questions. So I explained to this person, you know, we are the professors of the Central University. We came here to do investigation about the boxer movement. The business teaching is one of the very important place of the boxer movement. Oh, he said, oh, that's good. Then he invites us, would you like to stay into my office where and where? You know, we, we, maybe we can have some you know, interesting talk. So we went to his office and we figured out uh, he is one of the cadre, an important cadre of the political consultative conference of that city. Uh, he, you know, later he cleared, we are, you know, anti, you know, uh, foreign imperialism, you know, we just do the research about you know, Christianity. Some are good, some are bad, some are not good. And we also do the research on the box. It is good. Then he very kind and generous. Send a car, uh, send a driver to you know, send us to next stop. <laughs> because he is, a, you know, I think, a high ranking official. So when we arrive at the next stop, maybe, you know, two years. A missionary incident, you know, because of that the German, you know, took a seed, Qingdao, as a you know, colonial. Sheng uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Then we were treated, you know, uh, you know, drinking and dying, you know, dining, you know, and uh, they even want to, you know, don't us ask us to pay the hotel fees. But I said, no, 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 no. We, we, you can cover all this. 
then what moved us is that the official in that country city drive us to the Changchun church where the missionary case happened. A uh, lot of the, uh, in the cotton field. Uh, if nobody sent you there, you, you cannot find the place. And then we, we, we went to several, uh, I think more than seven or eight county towns. And the most important thing is we went to the, uh, uh, the leader of Da Daohui's home, home. and uh, Gary Tiedemann, uh, and me, we sit on the table and a sip of the tea and talking with the descendants of the Liu Sudan who was, who was killed after the rebel of the Da Daohui. Uh, so I think, you know, uh, Gary, you know, have done excellent research, have done excellent, you know, a field trip. And I, I was ashamed to feel that although I worked a long time in the Shandong province, I doing the research on Christianity, research on the boxing movement, but I never have been to these places. Not only me, all of the, most of the professors, they haven't to go to the countryside. Uh, particularly in the summer season. Uh, and uh, and uh, the other, the, and uh, Gary is very human. Uh, he always cheese me up, you know. Uh, once we, you know, stopped in the bus station, and uh, some, one, you know, pulled the water from the second floor. Uh, almost made it uh, wet at us. But uh, Gary told him, oh, he said, we always have a free shower, you know. <laughs> we always have a free shower. Then he, he told me, he said, Oh, my hammer become very heavy because I took it to so many center, you know, places. My photo as my photos. He always, you know, it's a good, good you know, very humorous person. Now he, his lecture in our Shanghai University also left a very good impression. Very good impression. So I also remember him very well. And because the, the, the uh, if not the pandemic th this year, uh, we had a, a you know, conference in Shandong University. In that university, we planned, we have a certain memory, you know, uh, meeting about uh, these, you know, very, Daniel Bass and uh, Gary Tiedemann. You know, they are, you know, the, the exchange between us, the friendship between us, you know, so we remember the meeting also. I should say, one of the inspirations uh, for this interview series was the death of both Professor Daniel Bayes and Professor uh, Gary Tiedemann because and, and uh, because of their uh, passing, many scholars felt we have to interview uh, important scholars to preserve their voice and their memory. But many of us respect uh, Gary Tiedemann and, and of course, Daniel Bates, very important scholars. And um, Junza, I think they were both Junza. Things, things. Yeah. Things. Okay, well, uh, the question really is, is uh, and, and many people who ask this question are young Chinese scholars. They want to know what your hope is for the future. So, I think the best way to do this is you can ban, you ban yong ying wan, you ban yong zhong wan lai hui da jiga wen ti. Yiwe hen duo zhong guo ren, tamen, tamen tebie jue de jiga wen ti shi hen zhong yao de. Yeah. Now, I'll say in Chinese. Okay. I think对这个中国基督教研究来说 
如何正确的来看待啊基督教运动在中国啊带来了很多好处啊以前很多 bias 偏见啊以前很多不清楚的地方啊现在多清楚我们彼此的观点啊都变得越来越客观啊像美国学者像加拿大学者像 Ram d u n t 啊他做了非常好的研究关于 cultural imperialism 包括你们做的研究对我们非常的有,有帮助 very inspiration illumination 所以这个 change 非常重要所以中国学者啊特别像我这种做呃我觉得所有我们做中美研究的啊做基督教研究的希望两国关系要正常化啊只有两国关系好了是吧我们的交流我们的研究包括基督教史研究能够正常的发展啊所以现在现在你看这个呃变得这种情况大家都有点担忧担忧啊是不是啊这个中美关系不能再回到从前了啊所以如果要问我的话这个是 top priority 啊 we should do something 啊 to help to maintain the good relationships between the United States and China The two great countries, two great countries. Though uh, uh, our voice is rather weak, but we'd like to express our you know, wish. This year, I read an article from uh, you know the the finance the the, the finance uh, journal published in Hong Kong. Uh, I think you know maybe in 1989. Uh, a lady uh, who uh, was a, a escort for our visit to the United States. Nowadays, uh, she worked in Beijing, uh, Beijing the liaison office of certain organization. I think if there were a possibility, I'd like to meet her. In almost, I think, you know, 40 years, uh, 40 years. Uh, since then, we have a good relationship. So we value. Uh, we cherish this kind of relationship. Uh, this is my, uh, my, my thinking. My thinking about the question. May I say speak in English? Oh. Okay. The first study of history of Christianity in China was developed in the international academic change between China and the West, particularly the US. Although there are differences in theories, methods, and materials between us. And we all contributed to the development of this discipline and establish the friendship at the people's levels. You have many Chinese friends. I have many American friends. Uh, this is a good accumulation of the capital of the national relationships. Therefore, I hope that the exchange between the Chinese and the American scholar could contribute, or could continue, so that the academic and the friendship bridge, it's a, we, we are the bridge, you know, uh, will continue to be effective. effective. Uh, this is the part of the people's friendship between the country, which should be developed, not to be interrupted. Uh, this is my, is the first, you know, thinking about the future, about the future. The second, in my opinion, the Chinese scholars are more concerned about the events and the movements, but uh, they know too little about the people, especially tens of thousands of missionaries. What we know now is about 50 missionaries, we know their name, you know, and no more than 100 at the most. In fact, uh, I think, I know, uh, the reader will be more interested in the people's stories. Like Amanda just published last time. Uh, last time. Through the stories, they will be able to better understand what these people have done in China. Therefore, I hope to do some character research, uh, including foreign and the Chinese character as well. And also, I also encourage my students 
of their master's students, my PhD students, to do research in these areas. Okay, that's my response to your question. Now, 我用中文说一下我非常非常同意您刚刚说的那个建议您刚刚说的那个看法因为我觉得我在我生活之内在我生活之内我最丰富的时间就是我在中国的时间所以我在比方说我在北京或山西的台湾这样的这样的地方我非